Well, today is Holocaust Remembrance Day. It's a day we pause to reflect on the millions of lives lost when the Nazis carried out one of the worst genocides in modern history. Israeli President Isaac Herzog laid a wreath at the Yad Vashem Memorial in Jerusalem today to honor the six million Jews who were killed by the Nazis. There were only a few thousand Holocaust survivors left in the world today, just a few thousand. A large number of them live right here in the tri-state. And this year's Holocaust Remembrance Day, Yom HaShoah, comes at a time when New York and New Jersey are seeing a record spike in anti-Semitic crime. News Force Linda Becerra reports on the mission to stop the hate and never forget. Never again. That's the hope. Never another massacre like the killing of six million Jews. But on this Holocaust Remembrance Day, fear about continued hate from a concentration camp survivor who lost 28 family members in Auschwitz. What's scary to me is, unfortunately, the whole environment that we're in. There's a lot of hatred. Our Jewish communities are still the most targeted victims of hate violence. New York City Council Speaker Adrian Adams reacting today to the disturbing findings from the Anti-Defamation League, recording 2,700 anti-Semitic incidents last year involving harassment, vandalism, and assault. They say that's an all-time high, with the highest number of cases in New York, followed by New Jersey. New York City is home to the largest Jewish population outside of the state of Israel, and our right to exist wherever we may live is being threatened at every turn. At City Hall today, the Simon Wiesenthal Center released its annual digital terrorism report and the volume of hate-filled posts online. Children are exposed to many online gaming platforms that spread hateful and harmful contact, content, including the replicas of Nazi extermination camps and glorifying it. The council has allocated $1 million for the Hate Crimes Initiative, which supports community-based groups working to prevent and respond to hate crimes across the city. Teaching them the difference between an idea you may not like and something that devolves into hate or something worse. Council leaders say there needs to be more investment in education, teaching kids to respect one another and reminding them never again. On the Upper West Side, Linda Becaro, News 4, New York. Well, here we are decades later, and some Holocaust survivors now find themselves in another crisis, the war in Ukraine. Coming up at 530, we're going to hear from a group in America that is helping those survivors evacuate. Israel came to a complete stop for two minutes this morning, marking Holocaust Remembrance Day. Sirens sounded to honor the six million Jews who lost their lives during World War II. And during that time, pedestrians stood in place, buses and cars stopped on busy roads, the annual Remembrance Day, known as Yom HaShoah, is one of the most solemn on Israel's national calendar. And on this Holocaust Remembrance Day, a new video showcasing 100 survivors is serving as a call to action. Four of the survivors in the video are from Ukraine. They were recently evacuated to Germany with the help of the Claims Conference, an organization that offers assistance to Jewish victims of the Nazis. There are currently thousands of Holocaust survivors in Ukraine, and as the Russian invasion wages on, the survivors in the video are asking the world to stand up to hate. Survivors in Ukraine are, are, are trying to now survive this current um, conflict, but it's an emotional trigger because think about the bombs falling, the sirens, the hiding in the basements, the fleeing, the dead bodies, all the talk of Nazis. It just brings them back to their youth. Wow. Uh, it's unimaginable to have suffered through this once, but to do it twice in one lifetime, it's unimaginable for us. It's their reality. The Claims Conference has worked with the German government to evacuate 75 of the most vulnerable Holocaust survivors in the hardest hit areas of Ukraine. And they're also working to deliver supplies to the thousands of other survivors still in the country. There may be a possible Nordic expansion for NATO. Finland and Sweden agreed to submit membership applications to the alliance. NATO's secretary general said both countries would be embraced with open arms if they decide to join the 30-nation bloc. Sweden has mostly avoided any military alliances, but Russia's invasion of Ukraine triggered a surge of support for joining NATO.